What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video on the Spider Shop channel from me, Jeremy from Jeremy's Wild World. Today I have the honour of making another True Spider video and this time we're going to be featuring Cerbatus Negabensis. These are commonly known as the White Lady Dancing Spider or I like to call them the Terrestrial Huntsmans. Um, an absolutely gorgeous species of Sporacidae originating from Cairo, Egypt. Um, today I'm going to be showcasing an adult female and rehousing it into a Spider Shop enclosure, basically going through the details of what you want to rehouse them into. Uh, one thing I also want to mention quickly before we start today's video is these are not really a beginner species. If you guys are interested in them, uh, do be sure to do your research properly. Uh, look at multiple sources. They do require high heat. Uh, so do be sure if you are planning to get one to ensure that you can give them the adequate care. But yeah, so that is enough for the intro today. Let's start off today's video by showcasing the absolutely gorgeous Sabalas Negabensis. All right, guys, so welcome back to the Spider Shop channel. And today we're going to be featuring another true spider from yours truly, uh, which is the Cerebalus Negabensis. Now, these are really, really gorgeous species of Sporacidae or Huntsman Spider. Really unique in behavior, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but I just want to mention something really, really important when it comes to wanting to get these spiders is to ensure that you provide them the appropriate heat. Now, Yes, they do come from deserts and they do bury under sand. Uh, I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, but, you know, they still uh, experience fairly high temperatures and you want to make sure you have an external heat source, preferably a heat mat on the side of the enclosure, not underneath because they bury to get away from the heat or um, a heat lamp would probably be better, to be honest. Um, personally, what I'm doing is keeping the group that I've gotten in a uh, heated vivarium uh, to ensure that the temperature stays warm consistently then there for them. Uh, but yeah, so that's just something I want to get off before getting into showcasing the spider. Do be sure before buying them, guys, to make sure you have the appropriate heat. Right, so let's get into uh, the tub here and showcase this gorgeous Cerebalus negabensis. As I said, they're part of the Sparasse family, uh, but they're very unique. Um, Sparasse family are typically arboreal, where these spiders typically stay a, more of a fossorial lifestyle, really. Um, staying on the ground, uh, making tube webs under the sand and bursting out to grab prey. Now, just taking off the tissue here, have a look at this uh, female that I've got. As you can see right here, really, really gorgeous, gorgeous spider. She's a bit grouchy, nipping at the tissue there, you can see. Um, let's see if she will go onto the tissue, stay there. Come on, stay still so we can have a look at you, girl. There we are, just take a look at that. Really, really gorgeous spider. Looks like she wants to go for a wander, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, let's just have a look at her right here. So this is the white lady dancing spider. Not to worry, guys, they are not as fast Alright guys, so welcome back to the Spider Shop channel. My name is Jeremy, as I mentioned in the intro, and today we're going to start off the video by showcasing the Cerebalus negabensis. So here's the specimen that I'm going to be rehousing today. This is an adult female, uh, but before we get into showcasing up close to the patterning and coloration, I just want to say something quickly in regards to the species. So... When buying the species, guys, you want to make sure that you're providing them at the appropriate heat source. Um, this is because they do come from really hot areas, uh, deserts within Cairo, Egypt, and other areas like that. Uh, they get really, really hot there, guys, like 35, 40 degrees Celsius um, during the really, really peak heat of the day. Now, although they do live um, under the sand, which I will explain later on, um, you want to make sure that that temperature still stays quite warm. Um, what I've done in the past is um, keep them under a heat lamp or put them on um, next to a heat mat uh, on the side. Uh, personally, with my group that I've got now, I'm going to be keeping them in a vivarium that I've insulated just to make sure it stays really, really hot in there. And um, yeah, so I'm really, really excited to work with the species once again and showcase what I would set them up into. And yeah, so let's just get a quick look at this gorgeous female right here. So I've gone ahead and taken her uh, into the tissue because she did want to go for a wander. As you can see, she does want to go for a little walk about. Uh, but yeah, so this is an adult female specimen. Uh, this is what this size you would expect them to come into. They can vary in size. I've got a few younger females and a subadult male. Um, they can come with missing limbs as well. But, you know, that's just the case with buying wild-caught spiders, guys. Uh, but nevertheless, really, really beautiful spiders. Look at that face. Really, really pretty. And you can see why one of the common names is the white lady dancing spider uh really really pretty um, i personally call them terrestrial huntsmans um because of their lifestyle of building web tubes and living under the ground and bursting out when they sense prey walking on top of their um their webbing but yeah really really unique species and something that i would recommend if you guys have the appropriate setup for them um yeah as i said they're not uh your typical huntsman spider uh really really gorgeous and i cannot wait to um hopefully get these bred 
in the future that's my goal little side tangent i do like to try and captive breed all kinds of true spiders where i can so yeah this is the cerebellus negabensis my adult female and now I'm going to showcase the enclosure that I'm going to be rehousing her into. All right, guys. So now that I've gone ahead and put some substrate into the enclosure, let's discuss it a little bit. So this is a really nice substrate mix that I've gone ahead and made myself, which consists of various sands, uh, topsoil, uh, peat moss, and then I've also put some excavator clay in here as well. Now, it is freshly mixed. Um, if you've seen in my previous videos, I have used a pre-made one before, um, but because, of course, they do use a lot of substrate, I've had to mix them up. Uh, but this will dry over time um, as you can see it's still yeah a little bit damp to the touch but it will dry off over time and what I've gone and done is given her more of um, depth in the back and then given her some flat areas at the front a little bit more thinner substrate to um, encourage her to make the tunnel at the back uh, I will also throw up probably prior to um, this clip of the previous negabensis I had before making its web tunnel that was really, really cool to get on video. Uh, but yeah, so I'm really excited to uh, get the spider into this enclosure. And just some other bits I'm going to put in here. Um, the main bit that I want to include is a piece of bark. Now, although they aren't an arboreal species, they will utilize um, structure to hang and molt from. So what I will do is just have this piece here, low hanging. So that she, she can, um, she won't like hang like typical huntsmen's will, hanging from the very top at an angle. They will usually just climb on top and molt backwards off of the uh, bark. So you don't really need to have it super angulated up. And then I'm also going to put a dry piece of moss. This is more just for aesthetic looks, really. Don't really need to worry about humidity. As I said, they do come from desert. So you do want to give them misting. I wouldn't even give them a water dish. Um, simply because you don't want the humidity to stay within the enclosure. Then I'll just sprinkle in some dried leaves. Again, I don't necessarily need these dried leaves. It's more just for aesthetic looks for myself. And as I always try to do with these uh, videos, guys, it's just a simple setup so you guys can follow along as well. Um, you know, most of the stuff you can go out and collect yourself. Like this is a piece of wood I've collected, leaf litter that you can buy. You can collect it yourself as well, moss you can collect. Um, the only thing that you really have to buy is the spider, the enclosure, and some substrate. Um, but yeah, so this is pretty much what I'm going to be rehousing her into. Quite happy with the results and hopefully um, she'll settle in here quite nicely uh, along with the other ones as well. I have rehoused the others off camera into smaller enclosures, but yeah, so for today, uh, this is what, if you want to display enclosure, I would recommend doing something like this. So now that we have the enclosure set up, guys, let's get this female into the enclosure because I can see her at the corner of my eye. She is eager to get out. And now we get into the final part of today's video, guys, which, of course, is going to be rehousing the Cerebellus negabensis. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And if you guys have any feedback in regards to positives and constructive criticism, do let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm really happy with this enclosure. And if you guys want to see more complex um, setups in the future, do let me know as well. That would be quite an interesting thing to do to allow enclosures to settle in and rehouse the spiders into there at a later point. Um, but yeah, so I've got some tongs at the ready, but I'm rehoused hundreds of true spiders at this point. I'm fairly confident that she won't do a runner. Um, but just one last look at her here, as you can see, gorgeous, gorgeous spider. Really, really excited to have these in my collection again. And like I said, I have a sub adult male, so hopefully he'll molt out and mature and get his round with the ladies. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so what I'm just going to do, um, if you, oh, I also forgot to mention, if you were worried about um, the huntsmen's or whatever you decide to rehouse in here escaping, what you could do is just put the lid on and uh, open the hatch. But what I'll do personally is just have the uh, lid on the side, uh, get her in the enclosure, and then I'll close the lid afterwards. All right. So there she is right here. I'll just give her a couple little taps on the leg just to encourage her out there we go just like that Ooh. you go down please yeah go down and get the lid and i'll pop it on top just like that and just uh, close that now there we go nice and secure it's nice and secure this spider isn't getting out and yeah, so that is pretty much the end of today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Ooh, that's got some weight to it. Uh, but yeah, this is the Cerebalus negabensis, or the White Lady Dancing Spider. Really hoping that she settles well into this enclosure. 
and hopefully I'll get some babies in the future. Uh, but yeah, so guys, um, do be sure to check out the channel Jeremy's Wild World, uh, as well as my Facebook and Instagram. I'm really active on there, posting about all my animals I have in my collection, not just the true spiders. I have others, bits and bobs as well. And yeah, so let's get into the outro of today's video and let this girl settle in now so that is the end of today's video guys i hope you enjoyed watching the video on the sabalas and gabensis these are an absolutely gorgeous species and i do highly recommend them if you can give them the proper heating that they require as you can see in the intro i mentioned i keep them in heated varium so this is what they're keeping them in and they're doing absolutely fantastic all of them are eating make their web tunnels and everything and yeah so that is pretty much the end of today's video guys i hope you enjoyed it um do be sure to check out the link down in the description below for all your needs from the spider shop including the link to the sabalas and gabensis and do be sure to check out my channel, Jeremy's Wild World. I'm really active on there. You know, I make videos on all the animals I keep. As you can see, I keep quite the variety of species here, uh, from isopods, true spiders, and everything like that. All the miscellaneous stuff is what I like to keep. So as yet to end today's video, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.